Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, third year students, I am Dr. Kamran. Sorry, I am somewhat late. Uh, so today we are discussing very important uh, basic uh, disease which you should know from now on is an epistaxis means a bleeding from the nose. Okay, uh, it, uh, it is very common. You have seen, uh, uh, maybe you have experience of seeing patient and person in their daily life uh, bleeding from the nose. So there are many causes, but, but first of all, we have to uh, see the blood supply of the nose. Nose has a peculiar blood supply. It's a dual supply from the internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. Internal carotid artery has the branches of an anterior and posterior quarter arteries. Well, the main branch from the external carotid arteries is the cephalopalatine artery. There are some branches from the facial arteries also, okay? Uh, you see the natural wall of the nose, uh, but most of the area, uh, time it is the bleeding coming from the septum. Uh, septum, uh, because septum is a, a very uh, highly vascular area, which is called the little area. It is situated in the anterior part of the nasal septum, just above the vestibule. So if, if, if someone is bleeding, you can see that area, which is just anterior part of the uh, nasal septum. Because this uh, part have a plexus, which is called castle back, castle plexus, and this area is called little areas. And castle back plexus have a plexus of the anterior ethmoidal, septal branch of the superior labile, and septal branch of the supinipalatine and the palatine, which in ostomus this area. Uh, sometimes the bleeding is from the veins, which is the retrocolumnar vein. Columnar is the skin line area just at the entrance of the nose. So sometimes a uh, vein is just posterior to this area, we start to bleed, especially in the small children. So this is the uh, back plexus in the little area. You can see here, there is the anostomosis with the different arteries here from the internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. Uh, another area which has a plexus is the Woodruff area. This vascular area is situated under the posterior end of the inferior thyroid, which is which is situated in the posterior part of the nose, in the corner, uh, where the cephalopalatine artery nostrils with the posterior pharyngeal artery, and this occurs mainly in the old pupils, and and it causes bleeding in the posterior part of the nose, which goes into the pharynx. Okay. What are the causes of epistaxis? It can be divided into the local and general causes, and sometimes there is no obvious cause, which is called the idiopathic causes. Local causes, in most of the cases, it is the nasal trauma, a plant trauma during the sports, during the RTA, after surgeries, and uh, violent slicing even can cause bleeding, and some infections in the rhinitis can cause and the chronic diseases like tuberculosis syphilis can cause a chronic uh, bleeding nose. Other local causes are foreign body, especially in the children who have the bleeding from the one side of the nose and have some uh, infective discharge, pleural discharge. So one should suspect the neglected foreign body. Sometimes the new problem, especially in the older pupils and the young boy in the teenage group, if it's bleeding from the nose, and bleeding is such that it is causing the uh, anemia and nasal obstruction, we should suspect angiofibroma in the young children's male, which has uh, repeated attacks of very severe bleeding. Local bleedings can also be from the nasal pharynx coming anteriorly into the nose. Uh, malignant tumors, especially in the older pupils, we have to exclude the malignant cause of the bleeding. General causes, as you know, there are many diseases which can have the bleeding tendency, uh, like uh, plastic anemia, leukemia, thrombocytopenia, and all this with the genetically disease like Christmas disease and uh, localized disease like hemorrhagic telangiectasia, which is a which is a bunch of abnormal vessels present at the nasal septums or the terminates. Liver disease, as you know, can cause bleeding. 
as they, as they have the bleeding tendency. So we have to go the site of the epistaxis. It is a, as you as I already showed the most common cause of the lateral area. If it is, it is usually causing the anterior bleeding, which means the bleeding is coming anteriorly from the nose, and the other area is Woodruff area, which usually occurs in the elderly pupils, and is the bleeding goes into the nose and especially into the throat, nasopharynx, because this is this plexus is present at the posterior part of the nasal nose. Okay, so this is the two main uh, sites of the nasal bleeding. Uh, if we uh, differentiate the anterior nasal uh, bleeding with the posterior, it is uh, it is most of the cases the uh, bleeding is from the anterior, the little area, and uh, if it is posterior, it is in the elderly groups and it is uh, related to the hypertension in these groups and it is. Um, difficult to um, manage because the bleeding is coming from the nasopharynx and to uh, stop it bleeding we have to put pressure into the posterior part of the nose and these patients usually require uh, hospitalization. So, okay. so uh, what is the management if you find a person who came to you in the emergency or the clinic with an epistaxis? Uh, it, we have to take a short history so to know the mood of the onset, is, is it spontaneous or because of any trauma, duration, since how long the patient is bleeding, sometimes they reach you when they have a obviously very large amount of already uh, blood loss. A side of the nose from which side it is bleeding, it is bleeding from the right or left side or anterior posteriorly. Any known uh, bleeding tendency in the family, we have to take notice, okay. History of drug intakes, as you know, anticoagulants and analgesic can cause the bleeding tendency in some pupils who are taking these drugs regularly. What is the first aid? What you have to do as a first aid in these patients, if the patient is bleeding and once you uh, want to uh, take examination and do the proper uh, management, the first aid is to paint the nose with a thermal index for about five minutes. It causes compression of the vessels. Okay, and if we, uh, because the, you know that externally the nose have the two parts, which one is the bony part and the other one is the cartilaginous. So we can compress the cartilaginous part with our index finger and thumb for five minutes. You know the bleeding time, five minutes. So it usually stops if it is, uh, the bleeding is in this area. Okay, this is the first aid. The second uh, thing is, uh, uh, cauterization. This is a proper uh, management of the bleeding site if it is visible, visible to you, especially by the ENT uh, specialist. And it is usually done in the anterior nasal bleeding because you can you have to uh, see the uh, bleeding point before you cauterize it. So, what are the uh, different methods to de do cauterization? It is, you can cauterize with the silver nitrate. Silver nitrate, uh, the sticks are available commercially in the uh, stores. So you can uh, cauterize, coagulate them with the silver nitrate or coagulate properly with the electro -cautery. Okay, if the bleeding side is not visible and the patient is not settled down with the first aid, you have to do anterior nasal packing. You have to put something into the nose to stop the bleeding. Okay, so things uh, where we have to do anterior nasal packing if the bleeding is profuse or the side of the bleeding is difficult to localize and we cannot do the cauterization, the anterior packing is done. We use usually the ribbon gauze and lubricate it with the, any antibiotic or the uh, liquid paraffin. And uh, we usually pack it and uh, we have to remove it only after 24 hours and usually the bleeding used to stop. Posterior nasal packing. It is required for the patient bleeding posteriorly into the throat. A post nasal pack is first prepared by trying to see. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a thing we have to maneuver it out to put into the nasopharynx because the bleeding is coming now from the nasopharynx. Okay, one thing is to uh, pick up, uh, put the post nasal pack. It is a gauze rolled into the shape of a cone and with, tie with the three uh, silks and 
pushed into the nasopharynx. It is usually in the GA and they tie it in the nose. Once, once thing into uh, one thing in the throat hanging like this, and the two into the coming out from the nose. And then you this way you pack the posterior part of the nose. This is the this usually is done in the GA. Other thing is posterior bleeding point can sometimes be better localized with an endoscope. Now we, as you know, we have endoscopes in using in many um, uh, specialties. So one is uh, we can use it to locate the bleeding point which is not anteriorly visible, and it can be correlated with suction uh, cautery. Okay. Okay. So there are some procedures which are not. Come, come in. Eh? Achha, achha. Oh, sorry. Okay. There are many maneuvers uh, one have to do if the bleeding is non stop. One is uh, that to, you have to elevate the mucopericondial flap, which we usually do into the SMR position, uh, operation because MR, SMR is an operation to uh, straighten the divided part of the septum. Okay. So, uh, even uh, because you know that on the septum the blood vessels are embedded by the mucopericondial flaps and sometime this flap uh, 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 teetering down with the bone keep the opening of the vessels intact so it is not closing so just elevating the localized mucopericondial flap at this bleeding side make the bleeding stop okay this is very rarely done now. And now in very well established centers ENT, one option which is usually they are following is the ligation of the vessels. We can, we can lig, ligate the uh, bleeding vessels. So if we want to do the ligation of the external carotid artery, it should be above the origin of the superior thyroid artery, okay? And uh, maxillary artery, you know the location of the maxillary artery, it is approached via the cord velic operation. Cord velic operation is a procedure in which the cheek flap is elevated and above the teeth, uh, they make a hole. Now we enter into the maxillary uh, antrum, maxillary sinus, and then uh, go deep to the removing the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. And now in, we are in the pterygopalatine fossa where the maxillary artery is located so we can clip this RT there to stop the bleeding and that small RT if the bleeding is uh, above the middle terminate we can approach this along the medial wall of the orbit okay we are elevating the flap and we can found them at uh, distinct points these anterior and posterior ethmoidal RT and we can clip or cauterize them there what are the general measures? If the patient is bleeding and is lost so much of the blood, we have to take the general measures uh, accompanied with this uh, specific management of the epistaxis. The one is to make the patient sit up, but if he is bleeding a lot, he is a hypotension, you have to make him lie down. Do you show the bleeding? Sometimes the patients are thinking that they are bleeding, that blood is coming from the brain. So make them. Uh, Take them into confidence that this bleeding is coming from the nose only. Keep check on the pulse, blood pressure, and respiration. Because in the older peoples, they have hemodynamically, they have no much reservoirs. So if they are bleeding rapidly and for the long time, the blood pressure will drop. So when we have to pack on the patient for 24 hours, uh, into the nose, we are blocking the sinuses which are draining the um, sinuses into the nose. So they may get infected. So we have to give them antibiotic. And if the posterior pack is there, we have to admit the patient and give oxygen by mouth. At the same time, we, we can order investigation and treat, to, treat the patient for any underlying local or general causes okay usually the investigation we are asking them is to cbc uh, bleeding profile pt okay and then uh, if the 
old patient is elder elder and he has a recurrent uh, bleeding from the nose so to exclude the uh, tumor cause of this we have to do a x ray of the perinatal sinuses x ray of the face okay uh, one condition which is sometime uh, very rare but sometime make you uh, bother a lot because the bleeding vessels are so much and they will not control with the ordinary methods this is called hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia and uh, it causes recurrent bleeding and the bleeding sometimes is so chronic that it causes anemic so these vessels which have the abnormal uh, blood vessels walls is usually treated by the lasers okay and sometimes the uh, it is so fragile the mucopericondium is so fragile that we have to put the septodermoplasty we have to do the septodermoplasty uh, to cover the uh, septum with the split skin graft and remove all the bleeding vessels there but it is very rare so thank you so much so uh, this topic is important reason because it is a very common topic uh, to be discussed later on when in your fourth classes and it is a common disease which is presented either uh, to your clinics and the emergency and you are called to see the patients uh, because uh, and, and a person who has a knowledge of the nose septum and all this area can uh, manage these cases who knows how to pack the nose and how much how is the anatomy of the uh, nasal and nasopharynx and uh, usually one has to face uh, and exposed to these patients and if, if we follow the uh, basic uh, guidelines like pinching the nose taking the care of the hemodynamics of the patients and then uh, step wise goes for the more rare causes initially we have to follow the more common causes okay because in 90% of the cases it is usually spontaneous if it is spontaneous without any cause it is from the little area if it is recurrent in the older patient it could be tumor if it is a boy in the teenager group and uh, he is a history of recurrent bleeding then we have to exclude angiofibroma okay thank you so much and next time we will discuss a common entity uh, facing in the ENT that is the ear pain okay thank you so much we will take your attendance Thank you, dears.